All right, I want to clear up some shit. The people who have a bad physique after 10 years of going to the gym and they post on social media and TikTok, Instagram, all of them, all right, and they say, oh, this is what a normal physique looks like after going to the gym for 10 years. Let's normalize this. Let's not normalize it, okay? That's them being lazy and it doesn't have to be you, all right? So if you really want a good physique and you really want to keep that physique for a long period of time, here are the ways to build up your mental and physical strength to achieve it. It's not that difficult, honestly, once you break it down and put it simply. Starting off with the pitfalls that kill your motivation and kill your gains. I can speak about this from experience because I've been going to the gym for three years. I've got friends in the gym. I speak to them all the time. Some of my closest friends that go there. I go to the gym almost six days a week and I have been consistently for about three years. So I've got a lot of experience. I'm basically in the community. Okay, I have a solid place to speak from. So the first make mistake that kills your motivation and kills gains is not getting on a plan. Not getting on a plan is fine for at least the first year if you don't know what you want for your physique or you just want to gain muscle and don't care about that much otherwise. But this fucks you up in the long run if you want to be strong, okay? So before I get into why, people have two different motivations in the gym. Three main reasons being to get really fucking strong, to look like a Greek god, and to get healthy. These motivations don't align at all, even though they should, but generally they can. They're all different pathways. If you try to get healthy, it's all about athletic training for body health. Think Instagram influencer for being a great god. It's all about cutting and lots of hypertrophy training. Think Ziz. And if you want to get strong, it's uh, basically eating like a truck. Think Grizzly. Well, you already know this. So what I'm implying is that you should find out why you wanted to get in the gym in the first place. You know, there isn't a tier list of which ones are better or worse, to be honest. Obviously, health is the most important in the long run. But you could also just quote Socrates and say, it is a shame for a person to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which their body is capable in that voice as well. And just do the full quote. It's a never ending Greek courtroom debate between the motivations, right? Once you find out why you wanted to get in the gym in the first place, you can decide what your plan you want to get on is. Trust me, getting on a plan is the only real way to get where you want to go. For example, right? A year ago, I'm training my hardest at bench press and I'm wanting to hit a heavy weight, which I did in the end. Then I speak to my friend, my powerlifting friend, and he told me he hit an extra plate heavier than I did before he even hit 100 kilograms, purely because he was a powerlifter that was familiar with being on a plan. All right, so get on a plan. The second mistake that kills motivation and kills gains is eating poorly. You really need to start hitting protein goals. It doesn't matter if you're cutting or bulking, you just need to start eating enough protein. Generally, when you've got new gains, you don't research what the fuck to eat. So what should you eat? For all these goals, the common thing is protein. You should aim to get near your protein goals for the day, almost every day. I'm not gonna mention what protein foods to eat are, and what your protein goal should be because you can find that out by looking at a protein calculator online on a website. Just look up protein calculator or I'll link one in the description. So do your research on what foods to eat and you can achieve and keep the body you want. The third mistake that kills motivation and gains basically is some stupid shit we all do is injuring ourselves. We try not to injure ourselves, but try not to injure yourself as much as possible on the journey to achieving your goals because otherwise it slows your progress down a lot, okay? It slows your progress down, it can stop you from going to the gym altogether. So if you're thinking of lifting a weight that's risky and you're not confident with your form yet, or you think resting or warming up is for the week, just imagine a slip disc in your back and then you can't walk for the rest of your life. Imagine all the gains lost. I squatted last year 140 kilograms within two weeks of starting squatting again. And this is purely for ego reasons. And I hurt my lower back, which still hurts to this day. To build your mental and physical strength to 100, right? You should start slow and find out what your routine you want to try. Routine being, most commonly, push for legs, which is a six day workout of your chest, your back and your legs, and then doing it again, and then taking a rest day. Or the upper lower split, two days of upper body, a rest day, two days of lower body, a rest day, repeat a bro split or different famous programs. You know, there's, there's a couple of different ones. I know for a fact that if you wanna get strength, most lifters that I speak to use the upper lower split and the people who go to my gym that are massive use that split, that are power lifters. 
And for people who can't decide between being really strong and looking like a Greek god, but are dedicated to and are committed to uh, getting a good physique, they use push-pull legs, which is what I used for two years. Uh, and bro split can effective also, it can also be effective if done correctly, but generally people think it's us because we know you can hit a muscle more than once per week to get maximum strength gains. <clears throat> a pretty common issue with push-pull legs that you'll run into if you use it is that you miss maximizing certain muscle groups like your arms because you almost always have biceps after back and triceps after chest. You know, first day of chest day, then you hit chest first, then you hit triceps. Second day of push day, you hit your back, then you hit your biceps, right? So these things make your secondary muscles less strengthened, I guess. You don't get to use the start of your workout energy to hit these muscle groups. Another one I experienced is the shoulders. This is my personal one. I don't hit shoulders that often because of this, because they don't have the time frame that I just focus on them. Whenever I hit shoulders, it's always in an incline press for chest or after lat pull downs for rear delts. Basically, push pull legs can miss hitting exerting muscles to the max, and therefore it is a middle point between motivation two and three. Trying to get strong and look like a Greek god, right? A common issue with the upper lower split is a lack of Greek god figure in that person's life. Put it this way, this split is great for powerlifting uh, because you can get very strong with two leg days and two upper body days in the same split, but you can often lose out on being the Greek god physique figure, okay? Both of these issues are pretty easily fixed as you can change the routine to make it not have these issues. You know, for example, a bro split you could add on the rest day in the middle, something to fill, like your arms, that sort of stuff, I don't know, or just like cardio day. Uh, or you can do it after any of every workout. There's lots of different things you do. But, you know, they can be fixed is what I'm trying to say. You can change the routine to make it have no issues. Just keep that in mind when you choose your routine, I guess. After three years of working out consistently myself, I can say it's actually not hard to get in the great physique. It just takes a lot of commitment, which is where the saying trust in the process can be used. Courage can change the outcome.